Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers should be aware that this program may contain images and sounds relating to deceased persons. My name's James Elkins. My name's Brenda Vanny. And we're going around Australia. Driving from Mount Isa and we get through Camel Wheel, mm. like that. Then that's open. That half hour run we could do quicker, and then it's open to even yeah. on. So what we're going to do? We're going to start at Point Danger on the border between Queensland and New South Wales. We're going to head north along the coast of Queensland, head inland, back onto the coast of Queensland, up to Cape York, across to Central Australia, up to the Northern Territory, through the Kimberley, down the coast of Western Australia across the Nullarbor, throughout outback South Australia, down through country Victoria, over to Tasmania, up to the Snowy Mountains, down to the ACT, through country New South Wales, back up coastal New South Wales, and finish at Point Danger. Walk around Australia with that. Okay, that's pretty comfy. Probably no building north. How many pockets? It's got heaps of It's got one, two, Northern Territory WA. You need big hooks like that. One here. Yeah. A pouch here. I'm most excited about just doing it, seeing it, you know. Kimberley, probably. I'm very excited about the Kimberley. Connemara, Falls Creek, Fitzroy Crossing, Gorges, Derby, Graham. I suppose the reason why I'm doing this trip now is because I got the opportunity to do it. It's one of those things I want to do before I die. So why not, you know? You know, riding camels, riding horses, going hunting. These are all things that I've thought about doing, wanted to do, but never really got around to it or never had time to do it. So this time it's kind of tick all those boxes in the one trip. It's just, it's gonna be awesome. And then down, Gregory's in here. Okay, Gregory um, down. Yeah, that's, yeah. Before we do the big trip, um, 125 day trek around Australia, we're gonna do a, a run inland for six days. So head to country New South Wales and country Queensland. Um, one, so we can see those places because otherwise we wouldn't have seen them. Um, we wouldn't have had time to get to those places on the big trip and two, so we can give the vehicle a run and give all the camping gear a go and see how everything goes. Um, just try and iron out any big issues before we go on the big four month trek. Jack, spare oil, plenty of bungee hockey straps. Yeah, and you got your license and all that. Two cookers, extension cord, gas. Right, check. I'll get. Oh, yeah, I'll give you a ring tonight anyway, and um, and confirm and, and whatever. Torch and uh, power boards for the filming and uh, computer equipment. There we go. Eh? What do we got here? Plates and cutlery. Oh well, we can get the batteries just as we go, yeah. as we need them. Yeah. Live boat and big hooks. That'd be good.
to um, Gundy, and it's pouring down rain, which sort of changes our plans a little bit. We're looking forward to camping and getting set up and going fishing and all that. But I um, don't know, we'll, we'll have to see what we, what we end up doing here. But it's been a lovely drive. Um, seems like a nice town too, so. So we've just uh, logged into Gundawindi. We're on the main street here. We've just booked in at the, the first pub in Queensland. And luckily enough, <laughs> luckily or unluckily, it's got a nightclub called The Pit. <laughs> so that could be interesting a bit later on. There you go, mate. Hey, How buddy? Are you What's good? Here we are in Gundawindi. <laughs> What's going on? What's your name? Hi Mira, how you doing? I'm okay, and you? Alright, thanks. Where are you from? Germany. What's your name? Stretch. How are you, Stretch? Yeah, it's Chubb. Chubb. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you pointing this thing at me for? <laughs> Whereabouts in Germany? Kiel. Where's that? Baltic Sea near Hamburg. Oh, really? Yeah, it might be something he knows, mate. You've got, you got a future here, mate. <laughs> this is Craig. How you going? He's Australian. Bloody oath. What are you eating? Rissoles, you got to try oh, it. <laughs> What's your name? My name's George. G'day George. And then wait, so are you going to stay here for a while? Are you going no, I'm here for another two weeks and then I fly back home for a bit and I'm coming back in August and then continuing my travels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we might meet up with you on the road sometime. <laughs> all right. and, yeah, no, that'd be good. Going down all right? Bloody hell, you got to try it. Yeah, all right. You've been from this way all your... Uh, no, no, I've been here for about uh, 40 years. I came from a place called Mount Isa before. Oh yeah? Alright, welcome to Australia. Thank you. Okay. I told you I'd get that. No. Yeah. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got five cents. <laughs> It'll be fine. Oh, I just want to get rid of all this change. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Gunson, the Gundawindi Grey. What's, what's his um, what's his race record? Uh, he's won a lot. <laughs> QTC second, first, first. Mooney Valley Cox Plate, Victoria Derby. Where's the one where he comes second in the Melbourne Cup? Oh yeah, third, third in the Melbourne Cup. We just left Gundy and now we're heading south. So we're here at uh, Will Kirkby's property, just outside of Moree. It's a massive pro 10,000 acres um, of cotton and chickpeas and wheat. They're the three crops that they grow out here. So this is Will. Go Will. How are you going? How are you doing? Well our family's been in Moray since 1830, 1840 or something. Um, the farm we used to live on, we've been there since 1884. Uh, but we've only owned this farm since 1988. This year we're growing some dry land cotton, which uh, is purely an economic decision. Um, the wheat price is pretty low, chickpeas, the price for chickpeas are pretty good, but the gross margin for growing um, dry land cotton is better than everything else, so yeah, so we're going to put some of that in. We've always been um, cotton growers, but irrigated cotton growers, so to grow dry land cotton is not that big a change for us, apart from the fact that you're relying 